Well, good morning to everyone out there in VSP land. I've been meaning to do some podcasts ever since VSP3 came out in order to talk about all the great features that we have, and I just haven't managed to get around to it yet, and uh, I figure version 3.1 coming out with the new addition of the Vortex Lattice Solver VSP Arrow was as good a reason as any better than most to get off my duff and prepare some podcasts or some screencasts to show you what uh, some of the new stuff that could happen was going on. So here you go. Please excuse the gravelly voice and uh, perhaps a cough or two. I've been a bit under the weather and I'm having a rough time closing off the last little bit of my cold. So VSP Aero is a new aerodynamics code that we've added. And uh, it's been developed by Dave Kinney at NASA Ames, specifically to integrate and to work with VSP and to use the degenerate geometry output that uh, was introduced by my grad student a couple of years ago, Joel Belbin. If you haven't used the degen geom output, it's underneath the analysis tab and it comes up, it's a pretty simple user interface. It'll write out either a CSV, comma separated variable file, meant for use in Excel, it's kind of, friendly human readable, uh, and if you want to write a program to parse it, whether that's in Java or Python or whatever, that's probably the easiest way, that's CSV file. Or it can write out an M file, and that's a MATLAB file where actually if you then execute that file in MATLAB, all of the, the information from the DGENGEOM are instantly populating data structures, they become variables in MATLAB to make that really easy to do. Now the DGENGEOM file has various representations, metageometries as Andy would call them, uh, it includes the entire surface, a thin plate version of the geometry. It degenerates it further into an equivalent stick and then all the way down to an equivalent point. And so there's these successive degeneration simplifications, you can almost say extractions of the essence of the geometry that are appropriate for various lower order analyses and come in handy. Uh, and that's really what it's all about. And really the idea with DGENGEOM was just make as many of those available as we could in a file just to see what people would do with it. Now you may not want to use all of the components in your VSP model in that DGENGEOM component and so you get to choose which subset of components if you're using sets you get to choose which subset to do it on and then you run by just hitting execute. Now VSP Arrow is a new analysis capability right here onto the analysis model and when you pop that up it has this new window that comes with in, in VSP 3.1. And right here under case setup, you'll see there's a couple of buttons, and these correspond exactly one to one to those DGEN GEOM buttons that I was just talking about. You have the DGEN GEOM file name, the CSV file, because that's what VSP Arrow uses. Uh, don't worry about the M file, it's good for other things, but VSP Arrow doesn't need it. You choose which set to output, and then a button to say go ahead and do it. We could do that now, but I don't like this file because it's just right now the default. VSP file name. And so now we'll just call this VSP arrow demo. And when we accept that file name, you'll see that VSP goes ahead and updates this name as our default choice for our DGEN GEOM file name. You can change that name, you can change the location of the path by just picking this button and going and navigating to whatever you want that output file name to be. We'll leave that alone. Since we want to do all the components at this point, just a simple wing tail, we can say all and we can click degenerate geometry and it just wrote that degen geom file. It was that quick. You'll notice some of these buttons that were gray are now blue because once that file exists, we're ready to go on to next steps. Now a couple of things you should know, in VSP Arrow and degen geom, the actual resolution used for those files is based directly on the wireframe you see on screen. So in this case, if you left that resolution for the wing as it is, you're not going to get a very satisfying solution. So we can come in here very quickly and increase the resolution a little bit on the wing and the tail. We'll just say so that we get a little bit better. We'll take that to 10. A little bit better resolution on both of those to resolve those files. So we've got a little bit better resolution there. And of course, we have to generate that geometry to make sure that our DGEN represents the current geometry. So I just hit the button again just in case. Now every aerodynamics analysis needs to have a reference area if you're going to output uh, lift and drag coefficients, and you need reference lengths if you're going to output moment coefficients. And so those reference coefficients 
you can specify them, just whatever values you want right down here in the VSP Arrow GUI. Or if you want to pick them from one of your components, you can choose to pick it from the model. And then you can choose which component you want to use as that reference component. In this case, our reference wing with 45, 18, and two and a half as the reference quantities. These are pulled directly from the overall plan form. Now, if your plan form is in fact more complicated, say it has something like a, uh, a Yehudi for a plan form break, and it's instead a bit more complicated of a wing, you may not want to use that exact plan form as your reference wing. You certainly can. This plan form quantity, as it updated, it updated right down here as our reference quantity. So you may want to use that, you may not. If you want to use a different wing as a reference wing, you're welcome to do that too. And uh, if so, any wing that's in this model, you can choose to use that as your reference wing, and there you go. So I just wanted to make that resolution a little bit more consistent with what we had before. The reference quantities are good. And uh, you'll notice this wing has a bunch of washout and again, that negative incidence on the tail. So let's just update that ge degenerate geometry one last time. We have a reference quantity set. We need to set our slope flow condition. Five degrees of alpha, no beta, 0.3 mock. Sounds good to me today. You need to have a reference point for your moments. So this isn't strictly a CG input to VSP Arrow. This is really the moment reference point. And you can do just as you might expect. You can dial that in if you know where the CG or the reference point that you want is, whatever your coordinate system. Or you can use VSP's mass properties capability. If in your component you've used uh, the density, thin shell, and priority to do a complicated mass properties model, you can use that. And just like coming in here and using the mass properties to dial in a number of slices and compute the mass moments of inertia of your aircraft, we have this set up as a shortcut helper. And so if we want, we can do 20 slices and you can choose the set. And this is nice because the set that you use to calculate the CG doesn't have to be the same as the set that you use for the degenerate geometry. So you can have different components in your mass buildup than you have in your VSP Aero aerodynamics analysis. So if we use that, there you go, we calculated the mass properties. Notice it populated this field because as I said, this is just a shortcut to that other calculation. There you go. I don't want that minus 0, 0.00 on my uh, rounding error and my YCG, so I'll clean that up. And there we have our CG. Now VSP Aero has a simple input file that takes all of these quantities here and a few other solver parameters. And so the VSP will, will start that up for you and set up that input file. It'll take all these quantities we see here, and when we click and say set up input file, it just wrote them out to file. If we click on the setup tab, you'll see this is actually a text editor that is that VSP arrow setup file. So all these quantities that you see right here were pulled straight off of this and placed in that file for you. If you scroll down, there's a few here that we don't have on the GUI. So for example, maybe instead of five wake iterations, you wanted to do seven wake iterations. You can do that, you can change that here. Just click Save Setup. And it's the same as going out to the file system and editing this file with your favorite text editor. Come back over here to Overview. We've got our geometry written out. We've got our setup file. We've tweaked some parameters, we're ready to go. And the next thing to do is to say, launch the solver. When I do that, we've actually spawned a separate thread and that solver is now running in the background and its output is being put out to this uh, solver tab console over here. And <clears throat> it's pretty fast, so this won't have much time to talk. Up at the top, there's a lot of diagnostic input that's interesting to look at, but you can't really look at it while it's still scrolling. So we'll wait for that solution to finish. We have seven wake iterations, so this will be the last one. Everything's finished, the solver's done. Notice over here, uh, our buttons have returned back to the status they were while it was before it was running. If we come up and look at the top, you'll see this is all the output that VSP Aero has. We use two threads, it echoes the input conditions, and then it goes through and it talks about the geometry, what components it found, how many elements, and uh, the mesh agglomeration, and other algorithmic steps. All right. Once that solution is done, you may want to post-process or take a look at it. And with that, you can launch the VSP Arrow viewer. So if we click that button, it launches the viewer itself. 
and this is a new graphical program that is added into VSP to visualize the results of VSP Arrow. So the first thing you probably want to do is turn on the Delta CP view. Since this is a thin plate model, notice how thin that is, uh, there's no thickness represented, and instead of pressures on the top and bottom surface, you're always representing delta pressures, changes in pressure from top to bottom, upper minus lower. And that's this delta CP on the wing and the tail. You can also visualize the wakes. And so as you come in, there was actually a time-stepped wake that relaxed and uh, represents that load distribution. So you can see there's a lot going on there with this wing that was at five degrees, but then with a lot of washout and a lot of down incidents on the tail. Well, that is your quick and dirty introduction to VSP Aero. Thanks a lot to Dave Kinney for making that possible, and uh, all the way back to Joel Belbin for all the work he did on degenerate geometry. I'll leave uh, exploring the rest and seeing all the capabilities that these tools have to an exercise for the viewer. I think you're probably already anxious to uh, get started and play with it. Feel free to post any questions you might have on VSP or VSP Aero to the Google group, and keep your eyes peeled for the next screencast.